Today we're testing out the Orbea Rise H30, a relatively affordable e-bike that I featured in my video about bikes I was most excited for for 2022. Well, my small dreams have now become a reality thanks to my friend Doug over at Mojo Cycling who rented these for the day. He's happily married, ladies. Please stop messaging me about it. I'm not giving you his information, but you know who isn't married. Strong and smart. Um, sir, what? I know you're doing a whole bit and all, but I just checked your analytics for you. You don't have any female viewers. We don't have any, like none, none. zero. So I'm seductively folding laundry for nothing. Yes, sir, this appears to have been a huge waste of your time and the viewers. Well, back to the review. So if you are in Bentonville or visiting the area and you want to check out the Orbea Rise, you too can rent one from Mojo Cycling. This aluminum e-bike retails for $5,699, which is kind of a bummer because it retailed for $5,299 at the beginning of the year. The Rise has 140 millimeters of travel front and rear, with a Marzocchi Bomber Z2 up front and a Fox Float DPS Performance out back. The motor is a Shimano EP8RS paired to a 540 watt hour battery, which as of right now is a larger battery than what comes on the Carbon Rise models. The EP8RS or Rider Synergy was designed exclusively with Orbea to use less power and feel more natural in the process. Highly responsive and super efficient in the words of the Orbea website. It has a max 60 newton meters of torque compared to 85 newton meters from the standard EP8. The claimed range is five hours in eco mode or three to four hours in boost and trail modes. Charge time is three hours to 80% and four and a half hours to 100%. The Rise is also designed to be lightweight. I rode the size extra large and by my scale, it weighed right around 45 pounds and that's with tubes in it. My little pasta arms couldn't hold the bike up and steady long enough to get an actual accurate reading, but it was hovering right around that 45 pound range. Despite my lack of upper body strength, that is an impressively light aluminum e-bike. The top end carbon model weighs as little as 36 pounds, which is absolutely insane, but it does cost over $10,000. Hitting the trails, the major obvious benefit of riding this bike <laughs> is in the climbs. Blasting up a climb in boost mode is so satisfying, <laughs> wow. and it leaves me with enough That's breath wild. at the top of the hill to tell Doug or whoever else is around me how f***ing awesome that was. Wow. That's incredible. Sorry, you're exhausted, random stranger. <laughs> I feel excellent. I'm gonna do another lap. Like I said, it's pretty obvious wow. that an e-bike is gonna climb well with minimal effort, but that also included some tech sections. I have cleaned both of these sections on a normal bike, but it was a tad less dramatic with a little e-assistance. Not that anyone probably cares, but I did try out eco mode for a bit, and it almost feels like a normal bike. I wonder if I can get up this in eco. I could feel my legs burning when I was pedaling hard, but I was going just a smidge faster yeah. than I would be on a normal bike. I'm doing most of the work here, it feels like. <laughs> Sorry. Not really the experience I'm looking for when riding an e-bike, so let's pop this thing in the trail in boost mode. As claimed, this bike does offer some pretty impressive rider synergy. I feel as if I'm one with the bike, and there's no awkward or unwanted surge of torque when I start pedaling. I think it responds very naturally to the amount of force I'm putting into the bike. Not that I want to talk about climbing again, but I did go up the bush push in boost mode, and I didn't pop a wheelie once. Oh yeah. It's so easy. <laughs> I was in the easiest gear, spinning light and fast, and it just casually propelled me up this incredibly steep hill. I recall riding the pivot shuttle a couple years ago. I struggled to keep the front wheel on the ground when climbing. Boost mode is an absolute <laughs> riot, and I left the bike in this mode about 90% of the ride. While descending, if you lose your flow due to casing a jump or poor line choice, just give it a couple cranks and you'll be right back up to ripping speed. <laughs> a second chance you rarely get on a normal bike unless you put in a ton of effort. While the motor can get you up to high speeds of 20 miles per hour, some of the components and geometry may not be up to the task of really aggressive riding. Keep in mind this is a trail bike, not an enduro bike. They do make the Orbea wild if you're into more gnarly descending. None of the trails we rode were horrendously difficult, but if you do ride really hard, 
I think a suspension and brake upgrade may be in your future. Orbea does give you the option to upgrade to Shimano Dior level brakes, which we noticed my bike had, but Doug's rental had the standard MT410 brakes. Not the worst, but braking distances are a bit longer with that extra weight. I did, however, appreciate that extra weight while descending over a normal bike. It just felt really planted while cornering at high speeds, and the little time I spent in the air it felt pretty stable up there too. One of the standout components for me was the Maxxis Dissector tire up front. It felt grippy and sure-footed on nearly every trail. Leaning the bike over in corners with that extra weight really helped dig those cornering lugs into the ground and helped a not-so-wonderful wow. cornerer feel decently competent. That feels so much better, that extra weight. Hitting jumps on this bike was a little bit of a learning curve, but it wasn't as easily swayed in the wind, which is a nice feeling. On the flip side, I did notice myself getting a little more tired after repeated jumps. The whole compression and, and lift motion with that extra weight was pretty noticeable, so it's kind of a double-edged sword. Moments when you're descending and you're not pedaling, this thing feels pretty great. It isn't so unbelievably heavy or have a stupidly long <laughs> wheelbase that it isn't easy to maneuver, and it functions really well as a do-it-all trail bike, and it just so happens to have a motor. My biggest complaint about this bike is the Physique saddle. This is the most uncomfortable piece of garbage I've ever put my deliciously sculpted glutes on, in case any of you ladies popped in. Did they? Still zero. No? Okay. And I highly recommend that you change this thing immediately. I'm very impressed with this bike and I love the concept of a natural feeling lightweight e-bike, especially at a price that even a non-dentist can afford. If you're currently in the market for an affordable e-bike and you don't need a ton of enduro smashing travel, then this may just be the holy grail of e-bikes right now. Thank you again to Doug and everyone over at Mojo Cycling for allowing me to ride and review this bike. I had a really good time doing it. And thank you for watching this video. I do appreciate your time. And until the next one, stay rowdy within reason.